My job is to remove the barriers between you and your miracle. And it is a terrifying responsibility. I had a young man come up to me in the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry and said, give me your mantle. I don't know if he thought I'd been in it too long or what, but I had a clipboard in my hand and that was not safe. So he said, give me your mantle. So I hit him in the head with the clipboard because he had it coming. And I said, go get your own mantle. I'm not half done with this one yet. I'm not half done. And he said, I want what you have. And I said, no, you don't. You don't want this. You think you want this. You don't want this. You don't want this. My wife and I live a life of faith. But unless drug addicts are saved, I can't sleep. Unless prostitutes and the homeless are born again in my meeting, I cannot survive. This is one of the only churches in America that I feel safe to go into. If I'm not here, I'm going to be in my tent. If I'm not here, I'm going to be pulling somebody out of a wheelchair in some of the darkest parts along Highway 99. If I'm not here, it's because I'm in the middle of it. But I believe in them and I believe in the destiny of destiny. I know it's redundant, but I do. How do I receive a miracle, Mario? <laughs> what a job to explain to someone who's over here dying how they can receive their healing. In a moment, we're going to say a mass prayer. Some of you aren't going to like it because a presence is going to come in this room. A blanket of faith is going to fall on this crowd. And suddenly people are going to feel their body changing. Their arthritis leaving. Their bursitis subsiding. Their eyesight being restored. Their ears being opened. And you'll say, how is that all possible? It's not my power. It's not my ability. It's not my strength. It's nothing from me. But you see, the Bible says that Paul looked at the man as I looked at Teresa and I said, get up. God is healing you of this. God is healing you of that. God is going through this list. And she said while she was laying on the floor that whenever I mentioned a part of her body, that's exactly where she felt the power of God. It was in her spine, it was in her kidneys, it was in her liver, it was in her blood. Now, raise your right hand, everybody. Say, I want to receive healing in my body. I want to receive healing in my body. I want you to look at me now. You put your hand down. In the next five minutes, I'm going to test to see if you really believe what you just said. Because it's very difficult for some American audiences to really understand what's going on in a miracle service. You go to Asia, you go to Africa, you go somewhere else. Suddenly, miracles break out everywhere because of the desperation. Someone's likely to be healed if they've walked for three days to get to a crusade. That spirit is being recreated in the Central Valley. In our tent crusades, the homeless are walking into our tent. We have the honor and the privilege of desperate people. The sad part is, is that the people in America who are in the most desperate condition are the ones who believe they don't need anything at all. 
Did I just preach something? See, your money doesn't matter to God. Your influence doesn't matter to God. Your lifestyle doesn't matter to God. And we know this because the great leveler, the great leveler is sickness. Celine Dion just canceled her tour. She said, my health is broken down. My muscles are, are, are in, health, in uncontrollable spasms. Her fame can't stop that. Her doctors may be the best of the best, but they can't do it. And you see, we have insulted God in America by making fun of divine healing. Am I preaching yet? Now, stay with me. If you want a miracle, open your heart. If you want to be healed, open your heart. How many of you know that when you go to the doctor, you have to be on time? He can be late. She can be late, but you can't. And the first thing they do is fit you with a gown that doesn't do the job. I don't care if you're a size two. They'll find a gown that won't fit. There's another nurse, and I know her job. She takes a 50-pound block of ice and rubs it on the table that you're going to sit on so that when you sit on it in the gown that is not doing the job, then they'll give you a pill. Help me, someone. They will give you a pill. And you remember, you saw that pill on TV. The lady was running through the wheat and... And at the last 10 seconds, a guy is talking as fast as he can and said the side effects and people have died and this will happen to your intestine. Until you sit there and if you slow it down and you listen to it again, you're going, I don't know what's worse. What's wrong with me or the pill? And you'll hear people in the medical profession, some of them are very godly and very loving people, but they'll denigrate an evangelist like me. They'll attack a meeting like this. But tell me what in the world is wrong with their mind. When you walk in here, you don't have to put on a gown, help me somebody. You don't have to wait. I'm, I'm gonna keep preaching a little bit here. You do not have to take a pill that makes you sick. He will heal you to the uttermost. He will heal you in your seat. We have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm gonna run around this room right now.